CataractCoach.com. Asteroid hyalosis and cataract surgery. Now, does the presence of this condition limit your IOL options? So here's our patient. Looks like a routine cataract. You got some ink marks there at the 180-degree meridian. And everything looks pretty normal. But if you look behind the lens, look at that red reflex, you may notice that there are a lot of these refractile bodies. Look at all that stuff. Those are the asteroid hyalosis deposits. Now, these are all throughout the vitreous cavity in this patient. And they're small particles. They're usually very small, 100 microns or less in, in diameter. And they're associated with various things. Now, 90% of them, people say, are unilateral. Though this patient is bilateral, about even in both eyes too. They also say it may be associated with diabetes or other systemic disease, maybe vascular disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, hypercholesterolemia, but then why only one eye? So there's a lot that's not known about this. And so a lot of studies have been done on the composition of these, and they've had various results, mostly concluding that it's hydroxyapatite and other materials. So let's start this case here. A routine case otherwise, normal cataract here. We'll get our 5 millimeter rexes done. And you can see as the eye moves a little bit, you see the vitreous moving. And you can tell because those opacities, these asteroid hyalosis bodies, they tend to be relatively fixed in the vitreous. They don't settle down with time. They kind of appear to be adherent to that particular spot in that vitreous matrix. So here's a nice looking 5 millimeter rexus. Now the cataract part is going to be very routine here. So the question is, what kind of lens can you put in this patient? Now, general consensus is to avoid a silicone lens because sometimes you can have interaction of, this, of the materials from the asteroid alloys with the silicone lens, and that may cause issues. So, okay, we'll put in a, an acrylic lens here, a hydrophobic acrylic lens. And the question is, can you do a different design? Can you do a trifocal or EDOF lens? Do you have to do just a monofocal lens? Well, let's think about it. The issue is the light entering the eye, let's say with a trifocal lens, is split. And so as that light is split into different zones, you're going to decrease contrast. Now the question is, does the presence of asteroid hyalosis limit then the amount of light finally reaching the retina? Does that scatter light further? And those are all good questions. The nucleus removal is pretty routine. We sped the video up to 2x normal speed for the nucleus removal, just so we can get to the fun parts here of the case. And then once we get to the IA for cortex, we'll slow it back down. So in a case like this, I like to do a monofocal lens. The patient's about a plus one high probe, wants to be emetropic, so that's an easy decision here. But I have seen patients who had surgery elsewhere and they got a trifocal lens and they seem pretty happy. Now keep in mind, you see all those deposits back there. Look back in the vitreous cavity, all those white spots floating around. This patient does not notice these. Patient's used to it. It's been there forever. So as a result, the patient is asymptomatic from these, completely asymptomatic. Now, in this case, we've got a pretty good view of the retina, and so there's no issue there. If you don't have a good view of the retina, this precludes your view. A lot of times people do like a fundus fluorescein angiography to help kind of light the eye up from the inside and detect presence of disease, like vascular disease such as proliferative diabetic retinopathy. In this case, the patient does not have diabetes. The patient does have this condition in both eyes, about the same degree in both eyes, and again, it's totally asymptomatic. You can see all those little refractile bodies. Look at that. There are a lot of, a lot of those bodies in there. And so in a case like this, I think you could put in basically any lens you want. I tend to choose mostly a monofocal lens in this situation. I just want to maximize the amount of light that's you know, going to hit the retina in focus, and I want to avoid splitting it up too much. So if you decide that the patient would be best served with a trifocal or multifocal or EDO design, hey, you can go for it as long as you explain things to the patients. Now, some of these patients do end up getting a vitrectomy. Let's say this patient presents here with a little light vitreous hemorrhage. You think, oh, maybe there was a PVD. Maybe there's a peripheral break in the retina. It may be very hard for you to view that peripheral retina. So in those situations, sometimes the patients will undergo a pars plane of attractor to remove all these uh, refractile bodies and give a much better view to the retina specialist. And so there are cases where some patients with asteroid do get this. Again, it's an uncommon condition. It's estimated that only about 1% or 2% of the population has this. Sometimes uh, it can be seen more frequently in older populations, but I kind of agree with that. Among my, my patient population, I'd say it's about 1% or 2% of patients. So every month I see a patient or so with one of these, and that's pretty typical. So again, look at all those opacities back there and how you move the eye, they move around. And yeah, surprisingly, patients just don't notice it. 
So again, my preference in these is putting an acrylic lens, a hydrophobic acrylic, and we talked about that. And I also tend to generally prefer a monofocal lens here, but I'm open to doing what the patient wants as long as there's a clear understanding of some of the limitations there. But uh, then again, the patients have had this condition forever, and they're usually used to it, and it poses no issues. So leave a comment below. Let me know what do you think about these cases, and what are your options for Iowa selection for these patients. Thanks for watching.